Japan, a place many have called a beautiful paradox. It's a place where East and West meets, a nation that is so modern and economically innovative, yet flourishes within its dominant cultural traditions. The bustling modern cities contrast to the tranquil faraway islands, enigmatic mountain peaks and beautiful landscape with the changing colors of its four seasons. In this country, an Indonesian has made his path, the journey of life, and tried to change the world, bringing his uniquely distinctive culture and cuisine. Japan is a beautiful country. His family may be ordinary, but Rustono's dreams are huge. He wants to make people around the world happy through tempe. I really want to do in all of my life to make a tempe accept the all around of the world. That is my ambition, that is my dreams. And so, Rustono started his journey of life in Japan to pursue his hopes and dreams. And it all started here, in the land of the rising sun. The man who is wearing the driver's cap as his trademark called Rustono. He could be any ordinary man in Indonesia. What makes him different though is where he lives. Rustono was born in Kabupaten Grobogan, Java 46 years ago. With his Japanese wife and two Japan-born daughters, he makes his home in Japan, where elegant and charming homes line the streets. Rustono met his wife Suruko in Indonesia. The two got to know each other when Suruko stayed at the hotel where Rustono was employed. After they were married, Rustono then moved to Suruko's hometown of Kyoto to leave. To so start from the hotel, uh, when I worked in the Hotel 7 here in Yogyakarta, Indonesia, yeah, I learned many things. Then I meet uh, the guests from Japan and now become my wife. うん、知り合ってからはやっぱ行動力ですね。私にはない行動力なので、うん、すごいこう言ったことは今日にやるっていう感じなので、私はどちらかっていうとま、明日にしようっていう感じだったので、すごい行動力がすごく after a couple of years living in Kyoto, the couple then decided to move to Shiga. The peaceful lifestyle of Shiga has comforted Rustono, enabling him to easily adapt himself as if he was back in his hometown in Java. In Shiga, Rustono started to pursue his dream. They bought a small house and renovated it, turning it into a small tempeh factory. Rustono is producing and promoting tempeh to the Japanese people, bringing something new to Japanese food and culture. Rustono's tempe making is a husband and wife labor of love. Rustono has been doing this every day now for over 12 years. Making tempe in Japan starts with preparing the soybeans. Tempe, as anyone living in Indonesia knows, 
is a staple food that can be bought at the market. Made of fermented soybeans by adding a mixture of tempeh yeast, it is familiarized on Indonesian table. Rustono wanted to turn tempeh into a business and popularize it throughout Japan. The marketplace is the Japanese food pantry. Foods from all over the region can be found here. This is where Rustono found the inspiration to start making tempeh in Japan. In Japanese, there are half uh, tofu, natto, and everything from soybean. So I think in Indonesia, we have soybean popular, uh, make it from tempeh. So that's the first time that I think it's possible to sell tempeh, produce tempeh in Japan. That was the moment Rustono's dream got started. He began trying to make tempeh at home. What awaited him, however, was not success, but difficulties. He spent day after day in his kitchen trying to come up with the proper way of making tempeh. Yet he had the same poor result, a problem that frustrated him. The yeast mixture would not rise. He had imported the tempeh yeast from Indonesia. Yeast mixture is essential to tempeh, but the soybeans would not ferment and turn into tempeh. Every day I make it, uh, it's not good. During four months, I make it and make it again and again. Feeling hopeless due to his repeated failures, yet Rustono refused to give up on his dreams. He tried to figure out other ways to solve his problems in making tempeh. He decided to go back to his hometown to seek for help. He studied his way around 60 factories for three months in search of clues to successful tempeh making. He finally came to a very simple answer. It was his lack of sufficient understanding of Japan's climate and food culture that had been the problem. once Japan's capital city and home to a glorious and flourishing culture. It is a place where traditions live on to this day. Kyoto is also recognized throughout the world as a city with diverse food and culture. It is home to a food culture recognized throughout the world, Washoku, Japanese cuisine. In 2013, Washoku was added to UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage List. Kyoto cuisine has its genesis in Washoku. The use of seasonal vegetables, the extraction of umami from ingredients, the delicate seasonings and broth drawn from kelp, these are the elements of Kyoto cuisine. The presentation is also highly polished. It is a cuisine nurtured by the climate and culture of Kyoto. And a cornerstone of that cuisine is washoku. Kikunoi is an established restaurant with more than a century of tradition. Chef Murada has three Michelin stars. He is one of the leading influences that has introduced Washoku worldwide, helped making it recognized as a world intangible cultural heritage. Chef Murata explains that water is a very important role in producing good seasoned dishes. Japan has four clear-cut seasons. Temperature and humidity change with each passing season. And the delicate ingredients are sensitive to these changes. Water is important because it is used to extract the true flavors of the ingredients and because it is used for making the broth 
that affects the seasoning of dishes. As testament to this, the well that sources the water used in Kikunoi's cuisine remains tightly guarded to this day. Kyoto is a region with delicious water. So, it was this 1,200-year-old city of Kyoto that shined a ray of hope into the darkness that had befallen Rustono's tempeh-making attempts. It was something that Suroko's father said, that he should try to find a pure water source for his tempeh-making. Then, on his father-in-law's advice, Rustono headed to a famous Kyoto water source. Gokunomiya Shrine was built 1,200 years ago. It was here that Rustono discovered Goku water. After a month of pylorus uh, to make tempeh, my father-in-law suggested to use this water, and that was uh, finally um, I succeeded uh, making tempeh. But I'm really, really grateful for that. During the Heian period, it was written that this water gave off an aromatic fragrance. It is the same water source used by brewers to make Japanese sake in Kyoto. He took the water home with him and tried making tempeh with it. It went well. The result was a convincing tempeh that fit well with Japan's climate and food culture. It's a place so stunning, even time stands still. I am Nobu Matsuhisa. This is my secret garden. Here, nature's bounty inspires travelers to discover a magical Japan and its amazing cuisine. All chefs have a secret recipe. Mine is... Hokkaido! Wanting to succeed with tempeh in Japan, Rustono set out a new challenge in search of highly quality water. He found it right next door to Kyoto in Shiga Prefecture, and a place with no tall buildings, just lots of trees. As the mountains came into view, who would have expected to hear the sound of water? Rustono found the water by digging down himself. I found this place and then I start to uh, make well. So I dig myself about eight meter. So uh, finally I found the good water to make process and make tempeh. Having found the quality water he had been searching for, Rustono ran to the building and set up his factory there. Since making tempeh is a family business, Rustono takes care of all the business with his wife. To save costs, part of his equipment includes an octopus washing machine he acquired cheaply in Japan. Rustono always prided himself to produce products according to the high Japanese quality control standards. Sanitation, quality, and expiration dates are strictly controlled. I have many experience when I work in the food factory. For example, every week two or three times that is for a healthy department, they come and check everything. This is seriously things here in the jobs. Rustono is extremely conscious of providing a safe product that people can count on. 
now we are in the fermentation room. Uh, we take uh, 30 hours in the process. The best temperature is uh, about uh, 31 Celsius and uh, humidity, humidity about uh, uh, 40 until 50 percent. Uh, we wait until 30 hours so we can, uh, we can see the uh, perfect tempe. Tempe is slowly and thoroughly cooled. The cooled tempe is then quickly frozen to preserve it. Making tempe in Japan went well. They started to sell their tempe to the Japanese people and the restaurant owners. At this point, again, they faced some obstacles, as many Japanese people were not familiar with this kind of cuisine. とりあえずテンペっていうもの自体を日本で知っておられる方がすごく少ないですので、とりあえず最初はそのアジアの食料品店さんとかそうレストランさんとかそういうところを最初にあの いくら電話してももううちはインドネシアのテンペがあるからいらないのっていう感じでもうあのほとんどはノーですねやっぱりねスルコ handles marketing and sales of the tempe like her husband she kept trying to expand the market for their tempe product ま、ずっとずっとそういう風にセールスをし続けて、あとはもうほとんど口コミなので、あの知り合いの人とかを紹介してくださいねとか、よかったら誰かあのお友達にも宣伝してくださいっていう風にお願いをして、あのあとはも
even time stand still. I am Nobu Matsuhisa. This is my secret garden. Here, nature's bounty inspires travelers to discover a magical Japan and its amazing cuisine. All chefs have a secret recipe. Mine is Hokkaido! Nara is a prefecture adjacent to Kyoto. It is where Japanese history began and once served as Japan's ancient capital even before Kyoto. Nara has many shrines and Buddhist temples that have been designated as World Heritage Sites, such as Horyuji Temple, the world's oldest surviving wooden structure. Here in this ancient place, people wait anxiously for Rustono's tempeh. ウルストナさんの Tempeh is healthy, delicious food that can be enjoyed without any concerns about what it is made of. Housewives and others have been hugely supportive of tempeh on this Japanese recipe website. The number of ways to prepare tempeh has grown to over 200. Tempeh has certainly enriched both the Japanese people and Japanese food culture. Rustono is now working on his second factory, located somewhere deep in the mountains not too far from the first one. The factory is uniquely comprised of 12 shipping containers stacked one atop the other. It took Rustono two weeks to prepare this new factory. This is about uh, 10. 10 container, 40 feet container. I use the recycle and to build my factory. I want to open my roof and then the sun can come inside. So I use the water from the mountain. Also for the bo uh, boiling uh, soybean, I will use the wood from the forest. So I didn't use the gas, I didn't use the electricity. I think about ecology. Maybe, maybe this is the first in Japan. During his 16 years living in Japan, Rustono has learned from the coexistence of the Japanese tradition and technology. There are three that I admire in Japan. First is technology, and then second is uh, culture, and then third is uh, nature. That three is uh, all balance. That, that, that is what I admire in Japan. Every product from Japan is good quality, for sure that. I know that. And then if I make product in Japan, so other country will welcome. I can make more big dream here start from Japan. Rustona continues to work hard to make his business successful. It is the power of never giving up on one's dreams. Try and try again, again and again and again in all my life here in Japan. Until my dream gets reality, I want to do the best in my life. I want to do the best for this. His indomitable spirit keeps pushing Rustono onward. Rustono does not keep his tempeh-making methods a secret. He intends to make the entire world happy through tempeh. His conviction is unwavering. Lisa, how about tempeh now in Mexico? Using Skype technology, Rustono keeps long-distance communications with his disciples about their business. I already uh, met some people who mm -hmm. know about tempeh, mm -hmm. and then they talk to me, they already know. Wow. 
buat tempe so something is happening for for tempe in Mexico. Apa kabar Rena? <laughs> kabar baik kamu. Gimana perjalanan tempe mu di Swiss sama di Perancis? Aku mau promosikan tempe di Eropa <laughs> dan mereka sangat terkejut sekali dan mereka bilang oh si tapi mm, kita bisa pesan nggak? Terus aku bilang iya kalau mau pesan bisa kalau mau beli sekarang boleh juga karena aku <laughs> dan itu waktu aku menjual tempeku yang pertama itu ah, luar biasa luar biasa okay. Rustono is there as he is every morning making tempe he is still working to make his dream a reality. Always smiling, that smile never hides all the obstacles he had in the past. I never, never give up for, for, for promote this wonderful uh, uh, thing. Yeah, I never give up on this. I really want to do in all of my life to make a tempe except all around of the world. That is my ambition. That is my dreams. He seems to have a glow about him. Perhaps it is the smile of a man accepting the challenge of fulfilling his dream. Okay.